Hello everybody, how y'all doing today? God is a good God, yes he is, I say God is a good God, yes he is. God is a good God, yes he is, I say God is a good God, yes he is, all the time. Not just sometimes, but all the time, God is good. He is great. He is grand. He is wonderful. Thank be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we ask you that you bless us this day in your holy word, Father God. Ah, Yahweh. We thank you, Father God, that you've given us the strength to overcome this world. We thank you, Father God, that you give us the remembrance of your holy word. We thank you, Father God, that you've given us fruit to bear within your spirit to be renewed by your spirit in our mind in our bodies and in our hearts father god we thank you lord jesus that you've taken the old wretched nasty and ungodly heart out of us that we may be able to have a merciful heart that we may be able to have grace as we speak and that we may be able to do that which is right and, and know that which is good to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Okay, today we're going to be reading in Luke chapter 21. Let me <laughs> slow down now. Let me breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. To God be the glory. We are not above one another. To God be the glory. There is not one that is greater than the other. By the grace of God, He has only given us the ability to to understand by his spirit. Let his word give knowledge that our Father God may be the wisdom that works through us, in us, and upon us. In Jesus' name. And he looked up and saw the rich man casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. And he said, Of a truth I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. For all these have their abundance cast in unto an offering of God. But she of a penury hath cast in all the living that she had. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, as for these things which ye behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be one stone left upon another that shall be thrown down. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And in the day and in the time draweth near, go ye not therefore after him. You see, we must not go after a man and follow after a man, but go into the word. Let a man lead to the word. To the saving of souls. Let a man lead into the understanding of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Not that any man should be in lead. But as we grow up, we should be examples to direct another to the word. Not by the word, but to the word. That the Spirit of God may direct them. And give them understanding as well as he has given those who have grown up in the spirit of God and understanding as well. 
And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after him, after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must first come to pass, but the end not by and by. And he said, But the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famine, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues, and into the prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. So in a spiritual understanding, I understand that sometimes we can even be imprisoned within our minds. You see, some people may come and cause you to wonder if we are, you know, put a crown of thorns upon us rather than allowing us to have the helmet of salvation. That we may guess and wonder or maybe even doubt within ourselves if we are saved or not but Jesus he tells us he says as you are have called upon me seek me seek my face for I am meek I am lowly at heart he says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light that we must imply him Learn of Him. Not to even think within our hearts whether we are saved. Judge ourselves. Nonetheless, judge another. But to seek Him and imply Him. That's what we must do. Prisons being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. And for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks, and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. He says, in your patience possess ye your souls. So how does faith come? Faith comes with hope. And hope comes by patience. But faith itself, it comes by love. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. And let them which are in the midst of of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too for these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled so our father God says the wrath of he said vengeance is mine thus saith the Lord the wrath of God will be upon those that come against him and we must know, we must have the gift of discernment in his spirit to know if somebody else is living and is going in a doubtful way. To be careful to not be consumed of their doubt either. But pray for them and be the edification to uplift and 
give them understanding by bringing the word. Let his spirit increase. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Those, uh, th those babes that just come in Christ. That just came to Christ. The ones that are barely learning of what to do and how to do in Christ. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Why? He said, for these days it shall go back up. He said, then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter thereunto. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. He said, be careful. For there shall be a great distress in the land and wrath upon this people and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. So we must fall in order to rise in the spirit of God. Our old man must fall in order for a new man to come. He is a quickening spirit. The old man is a soul. The new man is a quickening spirit. There was one Adam that was from sin unto iniquity, by iniquity unto sin. And then there is a new man that which is by righteousness unto holiness. And shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That is, until the promise of God. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, man's heart failing them for fear. Mm. He said, when that which is perfect is come, then that which is part shall be done away with. That a man with Christ will cast out fear. And that is the love of God. Men's heart failing them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. See, he says in uh, Luke chapter 21, Luke chapter 17, verse 21, uh, Lo, uh, many will say, look over here, look over there, for Christ is coming, which we were in just now. He said, but don't go after it, for the kingdom of heaven is within you. Men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads. For your redemption draweth nigh. He says, stand up with your head held up with confidence. And knowing that I am in you, you are in me. And our Father God is within me. As I am in you, you will overcome this world as I have overcome this world also. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree 
and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. And verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with sur surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unaware. For as a snare shall it come on them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. So Christ Jesus, he said that no matter who you are, the believing or the unbelieving, if you call upon the Lord, you're going to be saved. You're going to be pulled out that world. You're going to be changed. You're going to have a quickening spirit upon you. You're going to have the chastisement of our Father God. You will have the wrath of God nonetheless. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And in the day time he was teaching in the temple and at night he went out and abode in the mount that is called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple for to hear him. Most heavenly precious Father God, we thank you for your holy word. We ask you, Father God, that you allow us to not have a heavy heart like in the day of provocation of our fathers that were in the wilderness. And as they wandered in the wilderness, they never found paradise. So yet their carcasses lay in the wilderness this day. But Father God, we ask you that you allow our hearts to hear you and your spirit, that our understanding and by your wisdom we may increase through your spirit to walk in the day that you have given us, this moment, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. God bless you all. I love you. I love you. I love you. I know for a fact that God loves you. And let's pray to be to God that we can love each other as much as he loves us. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, friends don't treat me like they used to. Since I laid my burdens down, burdens down, Lord, burdens down, Lord, since I laid my burdens down.